on the line speaking to Mark and Mel from In The Burial. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hey, thanks. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Good to have you on. Now, uh, haven't seen much of In The Burial lately. What's been going on? We've been pretty much hidden in the studio, rehearsing, writing, recording, um, turning. We haven't played many shows because we just want to concentrate and get in the album sorted, finished, and now we're at that stage where um, we're a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a long, arduous process, but um, obviously I, t- I took a little bit of a hiatus as well. So, um, you know, I've been in hibernation for a little while. <laughs> yes, that's, the, that's what I was talking about, going to put you on the spot. What happened there? Oh man, that, that's a that's a super long story which I I won't get into in too much detail. Um, but uh, I needed to take a little bit of a break for a while um, from all things music, um, just to kind of feel my way into you know where I wanted to go next and you know whether I was still doing it because it was habit or whether uh, it's something that I still wanted to do and you know so. I took a little bit of a break and um and I missed it a lot. And um so I guess, you know, <laughs> I don't know, Mark can probably tell the story better in terms of like uh what happened with you know, in terms of like being replaced for a little while and all of all of that sort of thing and what happened with those guys during that time. Um but I basically came in um just before they were to record the vocals on their new album. Essentially I'd taken, you know, eight, nine months off of music, so um, it was a little bit of a crash course in everything again. (laughs) What was the uh, thought process when Mel wasn't available? We were about to set out for a couple of interstate shows at the time, so our first thought process was, all right, let's get someone in. We had a nice young man come and fill in for us for a couple of shows interstate so we could keep moving on. Uh, We did those shows. We come back to Adelaide. We had some dates booked for the studio, and we just started tracking the drums and the music and all that. But when it came time to the vocals and some other things, um, it was about that time where we had to start really assessing what we're going to do. And um, at that time, the music was just about all done and um, sort of started speaking about what we're going to do vocally on those parts and beyond vocals at the time. And the person who was filling in for us at that time couldn't continue on. So just out of pure luck, we ended up speaking with Mel again and, getting her on board, showed her the music, kind of weaseled our way in there. And um, from that point on, it's, it's, been, um, it's been a good process. Right. Now, the album, Mel, the title of the album is? Lamentations of Deceit and Redemption. Right. And this will be coming out very soon. Now, I've heard one track and it blew me away. Tell us about the track that I did here. Um, so that's Holographic Webs We Weave, um, and that actually has guest vocal appearance by um, Veronica um, Botticelli from Flesh God Apocalypse, the opera singer. Um, so, um, yeah, that's probably one of our favourite tracks on the album, and it kind of stood out to us, so we wanted that to kind of be our uh, launch for the album, for a better way to put it, I, yeah. I guess, like just to show people kind of the dynamics of what we're doing um, nowadays. I mean, there's, there's a lot of variation on the album of course but um that song just kind of stood out to us so we thought um well we'll give people a taste of what that's like and (laughs) how did it come about that um you got hooked up with her i basically um had her on my facebook um i'm a massive flesh god fan i'm particularly a fan of hers as well um and i just emailed her and asked her if she was available and whether she would be interested i sent her the track over um and she was uber excited about it um so, yeah, I said, well, you know, there's, there's some stuff already down on there, so let's have a bit of a play with this. And um, what came back kind of, yeah, exceeded expectations. I was very happy with it. And, um, yeah, it, it sounds super cool. <laughs> she just recorded it at, at home and emailed it across? Yes. Yeah, so um, what we did is we sent her the track in a, in a WAV format. We said, hey, look, this is what we got. Um, this is the lyrics Mel has for it. Here's some of her vocals have a bit of a play, see what you think. And basically her ideas straight off the bat just fitted everything we wanted to do. She sent her tracks to us. We loaded it in, had a listen, said, yeah, 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 perfect. And then it was that easy. Wow, that's insane. How long do you reckon it took you to um, get the album sorted? From start to pressing, probably close to six to nine months. And where was it done? 
The drums were done at House of Sap Studio through um, Jared Nettle, um, same as the vocals. The guitars, the keys, the bass, and any other extras were done through me. Um, and then we just went back to Jared at House of Sap just to do the mixing there. Mastering was done at Fascination Street through Tony, and pressing's done through Implant. Right. So what's the plan with this album? When's it When's it coming out? It'll be coming out around the Heavy SA time. We're going to be releasing it independently at this stage. Going to have copies for sale at the gig? Definitely, yes. That gig is going to be huge. We're very excited about it. Can't wait for that. How many tracks on the album? There is 11 tracks on the album. I think it's over an hour in total, maybe 70 minutes. 66 minutes, 51. There you go. There you go. We're going to hold you to that. We're going to check. <laughs> Uh, who else have we got on the album? Any any other names we want to drop here? We got Matt Gillick from Oath of Damnation doing a nice lead at the end of um, the last track of the album, just to just to set it off in a nice direction. Um, in, ca- <laughs> in case you're unfamiliar with his work, he works with um, Oath of Damnation. Uh, a story realm. I've known him you longer than you two have been alive. <laughs> <laughs> Great guy and just absolute talent um, to the extreme. We, we're big fans of uh, his um, lead work. He's amazing. Being a personal idol of mine for a while, so I had when I asked him to get on it and he said, yeah, he was okay, I was like, yeah. I was ecstatic. If people aren't coming to the Heavy SA show, if they're from out of town or whatever, how can they pick up the album? So it'll be available through our band camp. Um, in the Barrel Official. Yep, in the Barrel Official band camp. Um and also uh, it'll be available through, like, iTunes, Spotify. Spotify, all of those kind of platforms. But physical album sales are always better, aren't they? Yeah, at Bandcamp in the Burial Official. Right. Video clips. Is there a video clip in the, in the making? We're in the stage of organising a lyric video at the moment just to get some early promo out. Hopefully we can get that out before um, Heavy SA, just to give some early promo but all that's in the pipeline, along with a couple of tours with some bands we're talking with at the moment, just to try and um, get our legs around the country and show these people as much as we can. Yeah. In terms of, like, actual, like, music video, we'd love to do one, but that won't be straight away. The artwork I've noticed uh, on this picture on the screen in front of me is pretty cool. Where did that come from? That came from um, Disart Design, a guy called Hans Stroud. Um over in Germany, we just looked at some of this artwork that he's done. We liked it. We contacted him, said we want some custom piece um, to start with, like front cover artwork. Went back and forth on a couple of ideas. That's pretty much what he designed with us off the bat. We added our logo, and then we said, hey, look, we love it that much. Can we get you to work for the whole album for us? And that's what he's done. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much it's been Mel's visionary, though, so I can't take too much credit for it. <laughs> It was the first time, you know, working with somebody whose vision was very similar, I guess, to my own, who yeah. um, he, a lot of his art is very surreal and kind of a bit abstract. And, um, you know, that's always been kind of my forte with um, with art and, you know, always struggled kind of trying to relay that across to a graphic designer. So, um when I saw his artwork, I was like, oh, my God, this guy's incredible. And, um, yeah, we had to make very little revisions to the artwork. Um, it was just perfect. Yeah, super stoked on how it turned out. Uh, he just understood what we wanted to do as a vision and um, what we wanted to steer clear of and what we did want to incorporate our look like. And um, he understood that pretty much off the bat, and that made it so much easier for us. I've only seen the front cover art, obviously, but it's um, it's out there. And with that piece, we felt it suited the music perfectly too for the whole album. Basically, it just captured the whole album, that one piece, and I couldn't say much more about it. That was beautiful. All right, Mark and Mel from In The Burial, thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much, Thank you very much for having us. Excellent. We'll see you guys at Heavy SA where you'll be launching your new album, Lamentations of Deceit and Redemption. Love it. (laughs) So, excellent. We'll see you there, and uh, thanks again for joining me. Oh, thank you.